Hello again. Welcome to At the Kitchen Table. Again, I'm glad you're here with me. I believe the Lord has sent us another word today, and I'm excited. I want to ask you again, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. As well as, whenever you're watching a video, if you'd be so kind to go in and to share those with all of your contacts. If you believe the word of the Lord, um, as he's given it to me, help me to spread the word. Be an extension of my voice. Would you do that for me? Amen. Again, thank you for all of your support. You know, thank you for the text that I get and the comments. And you're welcome to use the comment section down below if you'd like to um, add comments that you want others to read. Feel free to do that. Just be respectful. And if you don't agree, well, praise God. Amen. We're going to love you anyway. Okay, so today we're going to be reading in three books. I'm going to Genesis, the first chapter. I think we're going in um, Matthew, and we're also going to go into John, okay? So let's get started. In Genesis, the first chapter, verses 1 through 3, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, Let there be light. Go with me now to John 8 and 12, which says, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And then we're going to conclude, flip back over to Matthew in the fifth chapter, and verse 14 says, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. You know, the, one of the first things God did was he created. And as he created, you know, he's expecting us to create, be creative and to use those gifts and talents that he's given us in the earth realm. But secondly, what I want to talk about is that he created light. God gave us light. Why did he do that? I believe God gave us light because he was interested in us seeing and being familiar with what was around us. And I know that we have some people who are who are sight impaired. Some can see just shadows. Some can't see anything at all. But yet and still in the spirit, they have 20-20. You know, that's the kind of God we serve. When we look at the word of God where he says, look, he says, I'm, I'm the light of the world. Jesus is the light. We know that he said, if you follow me, he said, what are we going to come into? The light of life. We come into the light of life, people of God. Meaning that we come into a state of awareness. We come into a place of knowing who he is. And we come into a state of experiencing his real and his true agape love. And then he tells us over in the book of Matthew, he said, now look, he said, you're going to be the light of the other world. And we're going to be as a city that's up on a hill. Well, that means two things to me. A city that's on the hill. I don't care where you are in the valley low. You know, you tend as you're passing by. I don't know if you've ever been in a mountainous area, but one of the first things you do as you're driving, you're looking up, you're looking up. It just automatically draws your eyesight up. But then that's what the world should be doing. They should be looking up to us to see how to make their way to a loving God, a God who sent his only begotten son that we might have the right to the tree of life. And not only that, it says to me also when he says that we are to be that city up on the, like a city up on a hill, it says to me that our moral standards ought to be different. Our, our general standards and the way that we do things, how we transact business, how we carry ourselves in the workplace, at home, how we interact with our family, our loved ones, how we deal with things that are, are not so pleasing and uh, distasteful to us. We ought to have a higher standard than the world. You know, it's disturbing when in a situation and you see those that are not necessarily practicing born-again believers reacting to a situation in better taste than those of us who say we know the Lord. You know, that ought not to be. Our standards should be higher. Our The way that our awareness should be higher. God doesn't get any glory about us being in the dark. That's why he tells us, he said, we don't take a light and hide it underneath the table. Why? We need to sit it on top of the table. We need to see. It's God's desire for people to see 
who he is, for people to see who we are as we are standing as the ambassadors and to represent him. So I want to encourage you today in the word of God that you recognize and know that you are the light in this earth realm at this particular time as you stand as the ambassadors for Christ. And it's time to dust yourself off. You know how it is, a light bulb, sometimes you got to go through the house and you just got to dust off all the bulbs because it might be 100 watts, but you might only be getting the vision of an 80 watt because it's gotten dusty over a period of time. Whatever situation, circumstances, or whatever things that might be going on in your life, if you need to sharpen up your prayer um, time, if you need to sharpen up your study time, or your devotion time unto the Lord, then you do that. Get that dust off of you so that you could present yourself as a light before a dying world. You can't be hid because it's going to be something about your mannerism. It's going to be something about the way you show love, about the way you go through, that'll tell people that you've come into the way of full awareness of who God is. So since you can't be hid anyway, and once you've been touched by the master's hand, you might as well dust it off and get ready to represent. You have a God day. Know that I'm praying for those of you that are watching. I might not know you by name, but God does. And you stay encouraged. And I'll see you again at the kitchen table. God bless you.